Hi, this is Amir at Worst Days in the Cape Town Emergency Medicine, here today to talk about insertion of an intercostal drain. Insertion of an intercostal drain is an emergency procedure to decompress the hemithorax of air, blood, or any other fluid. Although this is an emergency procedure, care should be taken for proper preparation of the patient, proper analgesia, correct use of equipment, and using the correct technique to insert the tube. Patient preparation should include at least access to oxygen, good vascular access, and minimum monitoring, which should be saturation and pulse oximetry. If available, cardiac monitoring and blood pressure monitoring is advisable. Insertion of a chest drain can be an extremely painful process, and we recommend a combination of systemic analgesia with an opioid analgesic and local anesthesia to ensure the safe insertion of the tube. Let's talk about equipment. You are going to need a local anesthetic. Calculate the maximum dose and be liberal in how much local anesthetic you use. You will need a blade and a surgical blade handle if that's available, two curved artery forceps, a pair of scissors, a needle holder and forceps. You should also have cleaning solution for the skin and, and a receptacle for contaminated equipment. Make sure that you have gauze available, sutures, we recommend a monofilament suture, which should be at least 50 millimeters long, with a thickness in the range of a 1-0, a 0, or a 1. You should also have some adhesive tape, the chest drain itself, and a drainage system. There are various drainage systems available on the market, ranging from the old underwater drain system to one-way box valve systems such as this. Use whatever you have available in your unit. Once the patient has been prepared for the procedure, the next step would be to identify the landmarks and clean the patient's hemithorax. To identify the landmarks, use the safe triangle. The safe triangle is formed by the posterior border of the pectoralis muscle, the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi muscle, and the intermammary or xiphoid line. You should now be left with a triangle. In that triangle, insert the chest drain somewhere between the mid-axillary line and the anterior axillary line. Once the safe zone has been identified, palpate for the intercostal space and adjust your area of insertion to avoid excess soft tissue such as breast tissue in a female or a large pectoral muscle in a male. It is important when inserting the chest drain to avoid the neurovascular bundle. The intercostal neurovascular bundle runs on the interior inferior surface of each rib and damaging that neurovascular bundle with either a blade or the blunt dissection can result in excessive pain and loss of blood. Make sure that you cut onto the top edge of the rib below and that your blunt dissection technique stays as close as possible to the top edge of the rib below to avoid the neurovascular bundle. Once your landmark has been identified, clean the skin of the hemithorax thoroughly. We recommend a two-phase cleaning Initially, clean the entire hemithorax, including the axilla and the area which you are going to be inserting the intercostal drain into. Then do a more focused clean using a standard bullseye technique or any other technique familiar to you in that area. Once the hemithorax is clean, the patient should be draped. We will omit draping this mannequin for purposes of demonstration. A classic way to drape such a patient would be to use three drapes, one underneath the patient and two drapes in a diagonal fashion, leaving the area of work open. Now you should insert the local anesthetic. Unsheath the needle and start at your landmark with initially infiltrating underneath the skin. Make sure that you infiltrate the entire area and deep into the intercostal space, onto the ribs and onto the pleura. Safely dispose of your shell. Allow the local anesthetic enough time to work. A common error here is to proceed too fast. While the local anesthetic is working, prepare the rest of your equipment. Remove your chest drain from a sterile packaging, maintaining sterility in your field.
repeated the chest strain for insertion by taking one of your artery forceps and closing off the back end. This will eventually prevent uncontrolled gushing of the contents of the chest cavity onto your sterile field or onto your cell. After having given enough time for the local anesthetic to work, test the area of skin and ensure good analgesia. Use a surgical blade to cut through the skin only. If available, use a scalpel handle, but if not available, you can make do with using the scalpel in your hand in a safe manner. Reconfirm your area and make a 2 to 3 cm incision along the top edge of your landmark rib and in the direction of the rib itself. Your excision should extend only through the skin and onto the fascia and should not be used to enter the cavity itself. Dispose of your sharp safely. Now use the curved artery forceps and a blunt dissection technique to enter the chest cavity. The principle is to insert, open and remove while open, then rotate through 90 degrees, insert, open and remove while open. This will tear and part the soft tissue until you can enter the chest cavity. Enter, open and remove. Enter, open and remove. Once you have entered the chest cavity, you will often feel or hear a pop as you enter through the pleural space and you may or may not get a resultant gush of air or blood. Use the smallest finger on your hand and insert it into the cavity, doing a finger sweep to feel for any adhesions or fractured pieces of bone or other tissue. Again, insert through the ribs and do a finger sweep on the inside of the rib spaces. Now it is time to prepare our tube for insertion. The back end of the tube remains closed off as shown. And at the venting hole closest to the tip, insert your curved artery forceps as such. You can now use this artery forceps to gently guide your tube into the chest cavity. Confirm that your tract is open and gently insert the chest, the chest tube. Once you're inside the chest cavity, Remove the artery forceps, discard safely, and aim the tube in a apico posterior direction. The chest drain should be placed deep enough to ensure that all vent holes are safely inside the chest cavity. In a standard male, this would be around about 15 centimeters. In a slight or skinny adult, consider inserting slightly more shallow, and in an obese or large and muscular adult, consider entering slightly deeper. Once the tube has been inserted, it's time to connect it to your underwater drain system to confirm position. Connect your system to the end of the tube first and then remove the artery forceps. Use standard techniques to confirm the position of the tube. Once the position of the tube has been confirmed, it is time to secure the tube to the chest. In order to demonstrate securing the tube to the chest, I will remove the box device to make the view less cluttered, but please keep in mind that you would not remove the box or the underdrain system in the real situation. There are many different techniques that aim to secure a chest drain to the chest wall. I'm going to show you one safe technique using a vertical mattress pulley suture. Whatever technique you use, please keep in mind that your suture should safely anchor the tube to the chest wall without resulting in unduced tissue tension or ischemia. Select your suture material. In this case, a monofilament suture 50 centimeters or longer with a curved sharp needle. Grasp the needle as per standard. Start by inserting a standard vertical mattress suture across the middle of the wound. That means deep and far on the one end. deep and far on the other. 
and coming back shallow and close and shallow and close remove your needle and discard if it's safely ensure that the ends of your suture are equal and tie a knot approximately halfway down this double length of suture such as shown right against the skin wind the suture material with just enough force to cause slight indentation on the silicon tubing wind it until you have about three to five centimeters from the tubing to the knot. Due to the nature of the vertical mattress suture, there is a skin loop on one side of the wound. Insert your curved artery forceps through there, grab your suture material and pull it out. Reconfirm the tension on the tube is proper with your suture material and now simply bring the knot up. At this time, without excessive ballet stringing, tie a simple knot and secure your chest right in place. Neatly trim the edges of your suture material. Now that your anchoring suture is in place, your tube should be secure. If you have extended the wound for whatever reason, you would now simply suture that piece of wound with a simple suture. Your suture is your anchor to the patient, and once we are going to dress it, please note that no tape should connect the tube to the patient itself. Start by halving a standard gauze square. and dipping the standard gauze square in a cleaning solution. Roll it up and roll that right against the skin. This little antiseptic impregnated ring helps to reduce infection around the tube insertion site. The second step would be to take another standard gauze and cut it just about halfway down. Lay this around the wound and wrap it as such. Although it is common practice, putting a large wad of gauze around this wound is counterproductive as it prevents seepage of normal wound fluid and obstructs inspection of the wound itself. Now that the suture secures the tube, and the dressing secures the wound, measure a piece of adhesive tape and in a manner analogous to the way that we put the gauze around it, cut it halfway. This particular brand of tape has an adhesive backing but use whatever product you have available. neatly and gently tape it down. A light, loose dressing like this increases patient comfort and promotes good wound care. Keep in mind that although the box was not connected for the demonstration purposes, it should be connected. At this point in time, you would proceed with confirmation of the position of the tube with a chest x-ray and standard post-chest insertion care. And that's it. Thank you very much.